These are two foot wide metal enclosures where these animals will live most of their lives. These are called gestation crates because it's where they're kept during their gestation period or their pregnancy. They'll be here for about four months at a time. Then right before giving birth, they move them into a farrowing crate, which is similarly confining. The mother will have about two feet of space, and when she, her piglets will have about 18 inches on the side. So the mother can just stand up and lay down, and the piglets will nurse. And they'll do that for about two to three weeks, and then the piglets are taken away to be fattened for slaughter, but the mother is then immediately re-impregnated and put back into the gestation crate. So she lives a, lives a constant cycle of impregnation, birth, and re-impregnation. And these are very intelligent animals. Um, confined in these crates, they suffer physical and psychological problems. They, this one you can see on her front leg, she has bruises from constantly laying on concrete floors. She also has, oftentimes they have sores on their shoulders from rubbing against the bars. And psychologically, they're often driven mad. This is a picture of one biting the bars. Uh, it's a neurotic coping behavior they often exhibit when they're confined in these factory farms, unable to express normal behaviors. So this is another picture of a confinement operation. It's for egg production. And, and this, these are battery cages. Uh, which are lined up in rows, stacked in tiers, in huge factory warehouses that will commonly hold about 80 to 100,000 hens. Uh, they're packed so tightly that they can't stretch their wings. They never go outside and stretch in, uh, scratch in the dirt, needless to say. They're constantly rubbing against these wire bars. Their feathers rub off. They have bruises and abrasions on their bodies. And they'll live that way for about a year before they're no longer productive and profitable. And then they're considered to be spent hens. And as I was describing before, there was an egg factory in California that had to get rid of 30,000 spent hens and did so with the wood chipper. Um, and the reason that these spent hens are of such little value to slaughterhouses is that they're very skinny. Uh, in the um, poultry industry today, in the chicken industry, you have two distinct breeds of birds. Those that are raised for meat, and those that are raised for eggs. The egg-laying hens have been genetically bred to grow, uh, to put all their feed energy into egg production. The meat-type birds have been genetically bred to put all their feed energy into growth, and they now grow twice as big and twice as fast as normal. They grow so fast, in fact, that they die of heart attacks at a few weeks of age. But the laying hen strains don't grow very fast and don't grow very large. So when you go to hatcheries, that hatch out the egg-laying breeds. And by the way, that, this picture is how the chicks hatch. They're in these huge incubators. In hatcheries that hatch out egg-laying hens, you have male chicks that hatch. And they don't grow fast enough to be raised profitably for meat. They'll never lay eggs, so they're literally thrown into dumpsters like this. This is a picture I took in Pennsylvania, in fact. In another hatchery in Pennsylvania, I, I talked to the folks about what they were doing and how they were disposing of the unwanted male chicks, and they described to me what they did, and on paper it sounded good, you know, as good as it can sound for what they were doing. But they talked about how they had trash cans, and they would throw the male chicks in there, and they would put gas in there, and the gas was heavier than air, so it would settle to the bottom, and the birds would die of the gas and they put another layer of, bird, of chicks and then more gas, and they do that to the top of the trash can, and you have a trash can full of dead, unwanted male chicks that they would then dispose of. I went back the next day, and I wanted to see this so-called humane process in action, and I saw trash cans full of live chicks. So it was clearly not working. And then I looked more closely, and what they were doing with these, these chicks and with other ones is they were throwing them on an auger which is like a large screw, and as it turns, it moves material. It's usually been used to move grain or sand or other stuff that doesn't have feelings, but in this case, it was being used to move chicks. And they were, some of them died on the auger, some were being dismembered on the auger, some were surviving on the auger, and the auger was taking them to a manure spreader, and that's a picture of the manure spreader. So these were live chicks being spread on the, manu on the field like manure. There's another case we were involved in in New Jersey. Um, I went and took pictures of the battery cages, and as I was getting ready to leave this egg farm, I saw this trash can of dead chickens. 
but there were actually a couple of living ones in there. So I took them out of the trash can, and we brought them to Farm Sanctuary and took care of them. But then we tried to prosecute the egg factory for cruelty to animals. And in court, their lawyer argued that they could legally treat the birds like manure. The judge said, isn't there a difference between live birds and manure? And their attorney said, no, Your Honor. So that's how bad it has gotten in terms of the laws. And that egg factory was ultimately found not guilty of cruelty for that act. There is a quote from Ruth Harrison, which I really like, which I think is very fitting. It says, if one person is unkind to an animal, it's considered to be cruelty. But where a lot of people are unkind to animals, especially in the name of commerce, the cruelty is condoned, and once large, large sums of money are at stake, will be defended to the last by otherwise intelligent people. So on today's farms, bad has become normal. It has become systematized, institutionalized, and it is defended by the American Veterinary Medical Association, it's defended by animal science departments, and it's oftentimes unwittingly supported by citizens who would be appalled by the conditions that exist. Now, of the 10 billion farm animals raised and slaughtered every year in the US, the vast majority are the chickens that are raised for meat. And this is what a typical uh, meat chicken operation looks like. And as I said before, they grow so fast and so large that they, that they die of heart attacks at just a couple weeks old. Literally millions of these chickens die before, before getting to the slaughterhouse. And they're slaughtered at a very young age, just six or seven weeks. So you might ask, how can the industry make money if they're losing millions or even hundreds of millions of animals every year before being able to sell them at the slaughterhouse? Well, in the case of these meat-type chickens, they're growing twice as fast and twice as big as normal. So you can afford to lose an awful lot of them, and it's still profitable. And again, they're raised in, in numbers that are astounding. Nine billion every year of these birds are raised and slaughtered in the US. And their fast growth and overweight condition somewhat perversely parallels the obesity epidemic that is now become apparent in the United States. And I've got a series of slides here from the Centers for Disease Control showing the growing problems and incidence of obesity. This first one is from uh, 1985, and you see the darker blue states there indicate higher incidences of obesity, about 10 to 14 percent of the population. Um, by uh, 19, Beautiful, thank you. I'll just use that. That's, that's good. Um, so this is 1990, and you see the dark blue states expanding. 1995, we now have a new category of a darker blue. 19 or 15 to 19% strange. We've never had that happen here. And why do you think these animals are so mean? And he goes on to tell the story about how he raises pigs and has raised them for years. And he had this sow who had babies.